They want to screw the girls, sodomize the little boys, and brainwash them all to come up to be soldiers and people to help them incarcerate the young people that's eventually going to get older. This is how they're going to have to operate this forever. Using people for a food source and all kinds of shit. Entertainment, you name it. Mad rape, mad scientific experiment, everything is getting ready to go down. And has always been going down. So get over your stupid bullshit about what I done said. I said what I needed to say to get your attention so you can know that God is talking to your ass. So know that and do something about fixing your karma and getting your consciousness ready to battle these oppressors that's planning on murdering all y'all asses in these camps right here. They not gonna murder me in one of those camps. I already know that. But a lot of you guys is gonna go to church and you're gonna go in the front door and come out the back door and be in the bus. So I'm trying to warn y'all asses. The bus gonna take you here. We found this crane which has seen better days but is plainly marked U.S. Army in the middle of the stockyard. We found other fully working military trucks and equipment here at other times. Inside the facility, we found large fenced-in areas next to the railroad tracks marked Green Zone and Blue Zone, suitable for holding a lot of people. Many of the old warehouse buildings have had new concrete floors put into them. Unused sections of railroad track have been dug up and replaced, and from the supplies in the stockyards, it is obvious they will be doing even more construction and fencing. Senator Lugo of Indiana recently obtained more federal funding to renovate this facility, which is supposedly only for the repair of broken trains and where most of the buildings on the property haven't been used for years. It certainly appears they are expecting more than just broken trains. This tower, overlooking the entire facility at one end of the facility along the railroad tracks, also has a radio antenna on it with a ladder up inside of it. It would make an excellent watchtower. See, this is what's going on. Okay, they trying to murder all the American citizens. Okay. Now here goes some police warning. Do you guys want to watch one more episode of this or what? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You know what I mean? We know that these devilish ass people can do this stuff without blinking an eye, all right? Okay, we all know that. In case you haven't saw this before, let me go ahead and show it to you, since we're here. I was pulled to the side road, which was uh, uh, a new cut gravel dirt road in front of a business, a builder supply business, actually Top Notch Builder Supply in Madison, Georgia. To my right, this was a, previously was a soybean field uh, in this little New Cut Road divided this field and the right side of the road was filled with, uh, which I thought was portable toilet still. I never looked at them that close. Same in color, maybe black, but which was an odd color. And I was sitting there going over my notes and um, a van pulled along the side of me that turned out to be the property owner and he greeted me and he was by himself and so we had a good little dialogue there and I asked him about the, the field of black boxes what, what were they because they uh, I'd never seen anything like that and, uh, and his statement was that if he told me I would be one of few people in Madison, Georgia, that knew about them. And he says they're, they're uh, disposable coffins, I believe he told me. And he says uh, there's a hundred, at that time, he said there was 125,000 there. They were stacked, uh, he told me, 15 high. I, I asked him uh, who owned them, and he stated that uh, the CDC 
owned them and that they were leasing the land, leasing his land for storage. And uh, he uh, said to his brother, I need to point something out to you. If the CDC got so many of these things put inside shelters where they're hidden from the public eye, that means they have so many hid that this was the overflow that they couldn't conceal. They have so many of these things that this 125,000 ended up where they got noticed by people. You better believe they have large volumes of these things in huge warehouses so they can keep it incognito. Nobody know about it. This man out here in Georgia spotted this shit and was smart enough to put it up on YouTube. Otherwise, we wouldn't know about it either. I uh, worked with the CDC in Atlanta and had been asked by the CDC to do a three-year extension to place temporary morgues all across the nation. So in January of this year, 2005, we decided to drive to beautiful Madison, Georgia and take a look for ourselves. It was on a Sunday and no one was around, with the exception of this one pickup truck that was coming out the narrow road that we were going in on next to this field. We flagged down the uh, pickup truck and it was providential that the driver of this pickup truck turned out to be the son of the man that owned this field. So naturally we started asking him questions and he told us that not long ago there had been as many as 500,000 of these grave liners or disposable coffins. We asked him for permission if we could look around and he said yes. So we did. We're just getting a, an idea for the size of these boxes. What could these boxes be used for? Well, they're called casket liners. And that's an interesting term, isn't it? It's a casket liner. When I first heard the term casket liner, I thought perhaps a lining for a casket. But this is too big to be on the inside of a casket. So certainly this could be used as a casket. This is an inexpensive casket. And you can see the size here. There's lots of room. Uh, I think my friends here, we could all probably get inside. It might be a little cozy, but we'd fit just fine. Which tells me that these liners can be used for more than just one. And uh, one more time, what kind of liners are these? Casket. They're not no damn casket liners, okay? We all know that they do not make no damn caskets that big, all right? And we all know that the government is not so concerned about you after they kill your ass, where they gonna put you in a nice little box and make sure that you get your dead ass that they killed disposed on in the most humane way possible. Look, take your ass into Albertsons, take your ass into Ralph's, take your ass into Safeway, take your ass into Farmer Jack, go into Food for Less. All you meat eaters, next time you pick up some meat that you're going to buy, look at the tray that the meat is in. And then you decide whether or not these are meat trays right here. Because they are. Okay, these are meat trays. They will put your ass in here and send you somewhere like a frozen dinner on frozen railroad carts that they will have to accommodate these things. Wherever they put your ass in these boxes at, they're going to immediately put you under a refrigerated circumstance and ship your ass as a food source to somebody. They're going to make profit off of murdering everybody in the concentration camps because they're going to sell the dead flesh to cannibals all over the earth who already know that there's no more meat left on the earth outside of the humans that can be eaten. Liners. Your casket liners. That's what the man said. That's what the man told us. What casket is that damn big? There are about, well, there were about 500,000 out here. Later, as I went back to my home office, I spoke of it there, and of course, people usually don't want to hear too much about this kind of thing. So it's never been mentioned, uh, you know, publicly, except just here and there, till I went to a luncheon, a fundraising, a fundraiser for 
Representative Sachs Pachambas. He was running for his second term for the U.S. House of Representatives. And it was a crowd, probably 100, maybe 150. It was congressmen, senators, state senators, and mayors. Uh, there was uh, one table we probably had, two to three star generals and a couple of one star with their spouses. So it was a real high powered meeting. But the uh, keynote speaker was the uh, a congressman, and I don't remember his name. He'd just been in the House for a long time, and he was the chairman of the Armed Services Committee. Um, and so he just spoke in behalf of Representative uh, Chambliss and the importance of having him on board uh, to be reelected um, due to our uh, threats. But it had to do with the, the nuclear devices that was missing from the old Soviet Union and it had gotten into terrorist hands and it, it was, the emphasis was on the, the critical state uh, that we face in this country and he said we could lose tens of millions of people in the next decade and he used those terms due to a nuclear strike on U.S. soil and I was sitting there and it became very clear to me that that could very well explain why just weeks I mean could be two to three weeks prior to that meeting that I had stumbled upon these, uh, at that time, 125,000. Let me explain something to you, all right, so we can all know. Anybody that is worried about a nuclear strike against their country, you got so much other shit to worry about first before you start worrying about the disposal of the bodies, all right? Not to mention the fact that all these countries on this earth that has the nuclear weaponry are all one gang. So they know there's no profit in destroying the earth by shooting nuclear bombs at each other. Now they can shoot missiles at each other that can cause damage and everything but they won't probably have any nuclear capability or any nuclear fallout type of chemical behind it. Because that fucks everything up. Now if the people that want to destroy the earth starts nuclear war, it's not going to be nobody deaf to go around and pick up dead bodies because you're going to be so busy trying to eat and survive so that theory need to get squashed. These things are here because someone plan on mass murdering people and selling their body as flesh. This is what this is. This is a marketing expedition right here to sell human flesh. Disposable liners or caskets or coffins or whatever um, they could be termed as in that soybean. No coffins or caskets are that big. There is no coffin you're going to insert these in as liners. You don't bury five or six people together. If it's a nuclear war where radiation done did this thing, just dig a big ass hole and push all the radiation contaminated bodies in. Why do you need all this? This is for a product that you're going to have concerned about being treated and prepared quality control is what we're looking at. People are going to pay high dollars for your ass, for ass steak. And you're sitting there worried about what your neighbors think about you. My job is to shake you up and get your ass thinking. And if I can't get you off your ego, I'm not going to be able to help you. So you need to stop worrying about what people think about you. People are going to think you ain't shit even if you don't do anything. So don't worry about all that. You better worry about turning on your God power so you can be able to combat all this evil that's coming on this earth right now. So don't be ashamed about nothing that you've done after being through 500 years of being rich.